Hey y'all, Little Drummer Boy here, and today I want to talk about, on Trucker Tales, I want to talk about Vegas. Um, in 2012, I uh, was driving for NASCAR Racing Experience. You know, they're the guys that have the old, old stock cars, and they take them to different tracks. Usually, like a week uh, after the race was there, and people can pay to drive or or ride in the cars. They also have Mario Andretti racing experience and Je Mario Andretti Jeff Gordon racing experience, which is Indy cars. And um, anyway, so uh, in October, November of Halloween, 2012, I they deadheaded me 2,000 miles from Charlotte Concord, right there by Charlotte Motor Speedway. Uh, they deadheaded me from Charlotte to Las Vegas, 2,000 miles. And um, they were putting on an event in Vegas for the discount tire employees where they got a free free ride along in the car, right? And so I hauled all the stock cars. Well, no, wait. That's wrong. They deadheaded me. Usually I hauled the stock cars to the, to the tracks. They had several different trailers. Um, but they deadheaded me because I was picking up a load of BMW z3 old bmw z3 race cars and i was bringing them back from las vegas speedway to myrtle beach speedway so the young bucks could do drifting and um anyway so um it was a good trip their their trucks were cut at 79 miles an hour man you could really rip in those things and and um could be dangerous at times too because you'd be going up grade you know and a long line of trucks you're just passing one after another and then somebody drops right out in front of you because they have no idea how you're fast you're going you know but made it to west memphis arkansas the first night and um then to uh the big texan and texarkana the next night saw the desert for the first time on that trip i'd been to uh texas and kansas and oklahoma several times before but never got off the prairie and uh, west of Oklahoma City, you're really starting to get in the desert. And then by the time you get in the panhandle of Texas, you are definitely in the uh, in the desert. And there's a uh, rest area up there where you can just look over miles and miles of desert. Uh, and they've got signs on the... Uh... What you fussing about, lady? Hang on, my dog's got tangled. Anyway, they've got signs... Um on the uh, sidewalk of the rest area see there's a little lady dog and um hang on baby <laughs> sorry y'all and doing my daddy duties my doggy daddy duties anyway so at the rest areas there in texas panhandle texas they've got signs do not get off the sidewalks rattlesnakes exclamation point you know and um so anyway, I stayed at the big, had dinner at the big Texan steakhouse and stayed there. It's world famous and guys that do have truck parking there. Um, they have a bar if you want to have a few cold ones before you can, you shut down for the night. And um, Amarillo by morning gets played about every five minutes in there and they have beautiful cowgirls, with bandanas on their legs, cowboy hats, cowboy boots, and um Great steak, and if you can eat 72, a 72 ounce steak and all the fixings, you get it for free. If not, I think it's like 150 some dollars. Uh, I had to drive the next day and I really didn't want to get sick, so my 12 ounce steak was fine enough for me. I couldn't believe how cold it was in Amarillo, but it was like in October and it's 25 degrees and I had 27, something like that. So I Googled, I'm like, what is the elevation here? And even though it's flat as a flitter, it's a high plane. It's over 5,000 feet in elevation. Uh, Interstate 40 in New Mexico and Arizona is over 6,000 feet. Um, it's higher than a lot of the Appalachians. And really, some of the Rockies were a little bit disappointing down uh, out there because you might be looking at a 13,000-foot mountain, but it doesn't look any higher than Appalachians because you're already at six, 7,000 feet on, on I-40 in the valley. Uh, the mountains around Vegas are big, like Mount Charleston's over 11,000 feet, and Vegas is only 2,000 feet in elevation. So the big old jagged, um, moon-looking mountains around Vegas with nothing growing on them are really pretty and, and majestic. Um, but anyway, so let's see. Oh, New Mexico, man, you get to New Mexico, you want to take a picture around every hill and over every every around every curve. It's just... Beautiful red rocks, mazes, buttes, you know, the big square, rectangular 
mountains um, and everything's red like a burnt red it's really pretty and once you go from uh, Oklahoma all the way out through Arizona you're on you're on one uh, Indian reservation after another and you can get like Navajo dolls for your girl the girls in your life you know and all kind of little knickknacks like that you know they make a lot of crafts and so then, the, I see, I went through Albuquerque, which is really beautiful. It's over 6,000 feet there. And then um, across the Great Continental Divide up at Continental Divide, New Mexico, 7,200 feet. Uh, the rare times that it rains up there, the, the water that falls on the east side goes in the uh, Gulf of Mexico, down Mississippi to the Gulf of Mexico. And the water that falls on the west side goes in the Pacific. And uh, anyway, so... Uh, went across this big mountain at Flagstaff that had only trees I ever saw in Arizona was at Flagstaff, this big mountain full of fir trees. And Flagstaff is on top of this 7,200-foot mountain. And um, and they've got all these Grand Canyon View drives and stuff. If you're in a car or something, you can you can uh, get on the scenic highway there and go and look in, the can in Grand Canyon from that mountaintop. You can actually see it coming off of... Uh, the mountain too on I-40 because you're even though it's 30 miles away you're higher than the Grand Canyon and if you look to the north I did only because of the sandstorm up there but if you look to the north you can look right in the Grand Canyon because um, you're slightly higher on I-40 when you come off the mountain at Flagstaff then that that night I spent in um, and I spent the first night in West Memphis Arkansas I think I forgot to say that on the Big Muddy, right, right across the river from Memphis, across the Mississippi. Um, the next night, I spent on a mountaintop, 80, I think it was 80, 200 feet, probably highest mountain I've ever been on. And it's right before we get to Kingman, Arizona, and California. California's the only state, I have been there, but it's the only state I haven't uh, driven on I-40 in. But when you're at Kingman, you're about 30 miles from there, and... Um, and they have a loves on top of that flipping mountain. I couldn't believe it. I mean, it was the most beautiful sight from where I was parked. You know, you could see 50 miles across the desert. The mile-long trains look like centipedes coming across. And um, I went running up there back when I was still running before I ran my knees bad. And uh, I was praying about three things, you know, uh, mountain lions, rattlesnakes, because I was running out in the you know, sagebrush and cactus. Uh, I was concerned about mountain lions, rattlesnakes, and and Indians because you could see the shacks down the hill and and um, nothing against Native Americans, but you know I know those aren't always the safest areas. So anyway, uh, and the, man, the air was thin up there too because you're know, eighty uh, eight thousand feet, definitely highest place I've ever been, and the thinnest air, no doubt, highest place I've ever been, not been in a plane. And so the next day, I oh, and, and one time I was, Route 66 parallels 40 from about Arkansas all the way out probably to California, at least through Arizona. And um, at one point, the railroad parallels a lot too. At one point going through the Arizona desert, I had a freight train right beside me going 75 miles an hour. I was like, well, man, they let these trains rip through the desert, you know, because usually around here in North Carolina, where I'm from, freight trains go about 45 miles an hour, sometimes 35. But they let them roll out through that desert. And um, the next day, I took Highway 93 on up to Vegas and crossed to Pat Tillman Bridge. I could, I could see the uh, intake towers of Hoover Dam down there. And y'all, I have a whole nother Trucker Tales video on Hoover Dam. It's one of the most Hoover Dam, Boulder Canyon, one of the most beautiful places I've ever been. So check out that video uh, for a lot more detail on that. I don't want to mix it with my my Vegas story, although it's 30 miles from Vegas and it was part of that trip. But it's just too long to do both. Um, so check out Trucker Tales Hoover Dam. Uh, it's a very interesting video and a place you definitely want to visit, especially if you're in the Vegas area. It's just 30 minutes away. So then I went across Boulder City and on into Vegas, and I'm descending into Vegas off the mountain at Boulder City in the morning, early morning before daylight, and man, the whole valley was nothing but lights. It was so flipping gorgeous. Only time I'd seen anything like that is flying to a friend's wedding 
from Newark, New Jersey, up the Hudson to Vermont, where his wedding was, and and from the from the uh, at that then time the the puddle jumpers were prop planes, and even still prop planes, you know, twin engines fly like 250 knots, and far as you could see for 10 minutes, nothing but lights up uh, in New York City, you know, flying up the Hudson. It was it was incredible. Um, from the plane, you know, not, nothing but lights. I, I was like, oh, wow, this place is humongous. But anyway, back to Vegas. Yeah, that's the way it was. That whole valley was just filled with lights. And um, so I got to Vegas, worked every day at the track, except for one. They gave me one day off and let me bobtail around uh, to see the sights. And um, and the one day I actually spent most of it at, at Hoover Dam and toured the powerhouses and all. I, uh, um, I only meant to spend a couple hours out there and spent the whole flipping day. Uh, now, before that, I did go to the Carol Shelby shop, which is all right there. Bruton Smith, you know, his dragways are like right across from his speedways, like in Charlotte, same in Vegas. So I went over to the drag strip and watched some of the NHRA RA boys and girls practice because they had just got done. Uh, before we got there, they had got done with their race. And uh, I met John and Courtney Forrest and got my T-shirt signed by them. So that was pretty flipping awesome. And um, and then, okay, and then adjacent to that, they've got a track where you can, I think it's like big money. I've heard thousands of dollars. But you can drive Lamborghinis, Ferraris. You can race them on a track, Corvettes, BMWs, you know, all kind of uh, high-end sports cars. You can race on this road course across from the Shelby shop. And I toured the Shelby shop, which was really cool. They had old and new Shelbys in there. You can get a base model Shelby Mustang for around $45,000, I think. But they're like, if you got the money, we'll build you one with 1,100 horsepower, which is like 400 horsepower more than a NASCAR stock car. Um, you know, six, 700 is enough to get you 200 miles an hour. I don't know who needs a car with 1100 flipping horsepower. That's crazy. Unless you got a death wish, but anyway, you can take pictures in the Shelby shop, but you can't take pictures in, you can take pictures in the museum, but not in the shop. They're not giving any of their secrets away. I got to go in the room where they build the AC Cobra. So many were people were building replicas of them. They started building them again themselves. And I got to go in the room where they convert Mustangs into Cobra Mustangs. And Carol Shelby got tired of people asking for his autographs. So he wanted the fans to sign autographs. And so they will give you a felt marker. And if you can find a place on the wall, it was about full when I was there, but I managed to put a memorial to my daddy on the wall of the Shelby shop. And, um, but yeah, you can sign your name on the wall in the Shelby shop, which is pretty cool. And, um, um, oh, so anyway, so then I went out to Hoover Dam, check out the Hoover Dam video for, for that exciting and beautiful place. Um, and then that night, okay, I was out there till sunset, and the sun just, you know, off the Red Rocks onto Lake Mead, and I'm walking across the Pat Tillman Bridge, 930 feet off the Colorado River, one of the highest bridges in America. And, um, man, it was one of the most beautiful things I'd ever seen. It looked like Lake Mead was on fire. But anyway, check out that video for that. Um so I got back downtown. I had nowhere, no idea where to go on Vegas, and I wish I'd have more than one day off. Place is crazy fun. I saw a hotel, first thing when I got on Las Vegas Boulevard, I saw a hotel said Elvis slept here, and you know I, I thought that's a strip. I'm like that's where everything is, right? Well, I see out this road, this street crossing, and all the people are walking down this street that's crossing, and it's Fremont Street, and Fremont Street is closed off, and it is a street party. 365 nights a year, man. I've never seen nothing like it. I mean, it on a Tuesday night, it was just like um, it was as as packed and as as much a party as Speed Street in Charlotte on Coca Cola 600 week. Um, just any night of the year, you know. I mean, um, they had about five bands. I learned to do the wobble, <laughs> and um, I had a good old time down there that night. And um, Oh, and they have zip lines up above you, lasers show up above you. It's it's a fun place. And so yeah, then we my job at the track was just to strap helmets on people. And occasionally they would switch us out and we'd walk them out to the car, you know, they were gonna be put in. 
But, um, yeah, I had um, a strapped helmets on people, which is a really easy job at the track. But, I mean, still, it's a long uh, job. You're on your feet all day. And my friend John Griner, he's doing that gig now, and I'm, I'm happy for him. I know he loves it. I really love that job. It was great. And um, got some trouble with tickets, so that's why I had to uh, not, not there anymore. Um, but, yeah, it was a great trip. And um, I'm trying to think what else. And let's see, on the way back, I blew two tires at Holbrook, Arizona, and thank God I was right by a uh, Conoco station in the exit, because you're not getting a, si a cell phone signal out in the desert, folks, you know? So, thankfully I was there, and I could... The uh, Meteor Crater is nine miles off of Interstate 40, but, you know, I knew it would be out of route, and I didn't have... I didn't figure they had truck parking or even allow trucks in there. So, But, man, stuff in the desert looks like it's five miles away. You'll drive an hour before you get to it, especially like a mountain or something. And so nine miles away, the meteor crater, I could see the rim of it from at the Conoco station when I was waiting to get my tires fixed. I could see the rim. And um, so anyway, I had a real good trip. Got to see the desert for the first time. And. And my throat got scratchy in Vegas, and one of the other drivers that had been out there lots before, he said, wait till you get to Amarillo. He said, come on to Amarillo on the way back. Your sinuses are going to open up like a flood. I didn't pay much attention to it. When I got to Amarillo, it felt like somebody punched me in the nose because you're starting to come back into the, the East Coast humidity, you know, and um, he was dead on right about that. Some people get nosebleeds in Vegas. I didn't, thank God. Hadn't had a nosebleed since about kindergarten, and I thank you, Jesus, for that because it was awful. Um, but then I had some close calls coming back, man. I had some idiot in Fort Smith, Arkansas. Traffic was heavy, and somebody, okay, you know how the situation, everybody's going to move over for the cops now when they pull over, right? Well, this car, and I have plenty of room, but I'm booking it down through there in the hammer lane, and I, I don't know if the person that got stopped, this person was with them or what. But this idiot just stops in the hammer lane. I mean, just stops. And it was all I could do to get that truck stopped and not run over their stupid ass. And um, at, at one, and I felt something shift in the car and I'm in the in the trailer. I'm like, dadgummit, one of the cars broke loose. So sure enough, back in, uh, I got some friends in Mount Juliet, Tennessee, Robin, uh, Wilson Patterson, James Patterson, and uh, had lunch with them in Nashville, and I checked the uh, checked on the cars there, and thankfully, uh, you know, what's necessity is the mother of, of invention, right? <laughs> well, uh, I took one of the carcasses of the tires that I've blown, and I stuck it between the wall and that BMW race car to stabilize it, and so it wouldn't be, you know, slide anymore and hit the wall. I didn't want to do any damage at all to the race car but i had no way of straightening it back up either you know once it shifted so it worked it worked and then <laughs> i'm back in charlotte about to end the trip and I, and i'm getting ready to get on i-77 from 85 and this guy just cuts over in front of me he's about to miss his exit a family, a whole family in this car. He cuts over in front of me, and, and rather than going on to the next lane, I guess he's trying to decide what to do. He just slams on the brakes right in front of my truck. I mean, oh, my gosh. And I, I had another uh, truck driver that wasn't paying attention in the curve in Tennessee and about ran me into the median. And I was like, golly, it was a fun trip, but it was kind of uh, kind of scary trip. Anyway, that's my trucker tale about my Vegas trip. I hope you all liked it. Like, share, and subscribe. Little Drummer Boy. Take care, drum heads. I love you. Peace out.